Hey, it's day seven. We're just about ending this journey where we're looking at waiting on God and particularly that he brings blessings to us that from our perspective seem delayed. Now, we're going to look at a, a kind of an unusual portion of scripture today. We're still in Luke again, and we're just looking at Luke chapter three. We haven't gone far, and I want to read you Luke chapter three, verse 21. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. And that's really what I was trying to bring you to. So here we have this announcement at his birth that he's going to be the Savior of the world. We see him uh, shocking the great theologians of his day when he's 12 years old for a brief time in the temple. But then it says he goes home for the rest of his life from 12 to 30. He submits to his parents. He's obedient to them. He grows with, in stature with God and men. We don't know anything else. We don't know what went on in his life. God has chosen to keep that hidden from us. Now, there are lots of books that are circulated around. Usually we always hear about these things at Easter called the, the, the other gospels, the, the lost gospels. But what they are, they're not lost, they're not the other at all. They're, they're Gnostic gospels. They were mostly made around the second century, far after the original scriptures. And so when you hear these things, don't you believe for one second that you don't have a whole Bible? We, we do. Those are false gospels. The early followers of Jesus recognized them as false, rejected them in totality. It's just that a lot of uh, people today that don't know any better pick these things up. But if you ever read one, by the way, if you've ever read the real gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then you read one of these supposedly lost gospels, you will laugh at how ridiculous they are in comparison to the real Gospels. Okay, at any rate, my point I'm trying to make is this. Jesus himself submits to a period of waiting. You say, Randy, does that mean that he was not fully God even when he was a child? No, the scripture teaches he was, but he submitted. He was trying to give a model, okay? He was trying to reveal to humanity the full nature of God, but also he was revealing to humanity the full nature of what a human being in a perfect relationship with God was supposed to look like, function like. And so he submits to his parents. He waits for, you know, 30 years of his life before his brief ministry starts. His ministry only goes for about three and a half years. He packed more into three and a half years than anyone in history. In fact, to the point that John says in his gospel in chapter uh, 20 that if all the books in the world were gathered together they they couldn't hold the the full story of all that Jesus taught and did so we have sufficient given to us but Jesus waited now you might wonder well why did he wait well there was a certain model of maturity that was necessary for example <laughs> this might sound a little facetious but he's 12 years old in the temple and he's shocking the learned theologians but are adults ready to receive life instruction for the most part from a 12-year-old? Is it, is it appropriate? No, no. Uh, there, there has to be some maturity. So Jesus waits for the 30-year marker, which God had given in the Old Testament as a marker when someone could partake in the Levitical priesthood. It was kind of God's way of saying, okay, now you're mature enough to have the right to minister to other, other adult people. Jesus himself submitted to that. And of course, the blessing that we have received and the world has received, it, it's, it's echoing down and multiplying to our very day. Two billion people today will identify themselves as followers of Jesus. Maybe they're not all really followers of Jesus. Nevertheless, his impact is not decreasing. His impact has increased all through history because he waited the way that he should have. When God asks us to wait, be sure it's because he has a blessing attached to it. Thank you.